Hi guys, it's Sophie. So today I wanted to show you all of the five star books I've read during 2015. I have managed to give you a top three, uh, but I just think that all the books I've read this year that I've given five stars have been absolutely fabulous and I wanted to share them all with you. So I'll run through those quickly for you first. The Secret History by Donna Tart. The Enchanted by Rennie Denfeld. The Children Act by Ian McEwan. Antigone by Sophocles. Reasons She Goes to the Woods by Deborah K. Davies. Socrates' Defence by Plato. Forgive Me, Lena Peacock by Matthew Quick. Spatnik Sweetheart by Haruki Murakami. Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. The Midwich Cuckoos by John Wyndham. A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. The Circle by Dave Eggers. The Drowned Life by Geoffrey Ford. The Martian by Andy Weir. The Bees by Laleen Paul. Surface Rights by Melissa Hardy. The Dig by Simon Jones. The House on Mango Street by Sandra Sisneros. Feral by Janet McAdams. Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe by Benjamin Elias Sinez. Through the Woods by Emily Carroll. Night Film by Marissa Pessel. A Little Life by Hanya Yangahara. How Much Land Does a Man Need by Leo Tolstoy. Barbara the Slut and Other People by Lauren Holmes. 1984 by George Orwell. Special Topics in Calamity Physics by Marisha Pessel. Muno by Malik Sihad. Cabin Porn by various authors. Jellyfish by Janice Galloway. And last but not least, One of Us by Asne Stenisad. Okay, so the top three in order. In third place is Reasons to Go to the Woods by Deborah K. Davies. This is a sort of novel told in vignettes um, about a very disturbed young girl, um, her life and the way she's interacting with other people, her family, her brothers, um, and sort of this odd relationship she has with her father as well. It's really disturbing, but it's really innovatively told. Um, I think I showed you before, each one is just one single page, and I think that's so clever, it reads, it read so quickly um, and there were just little turns and twists of phrases that were just absolutely just incredible and it has stuck with me, the idea of this strange little girl and one of the scenes at the beginning in particular I just can't get out of my head, it's, it's a really creepy book and if you do like darker and more disturbing topics in your reading then I would recommend this one. And then number two, um, which sort of so close to being number one but I think it's just a little bit of an edge, number two is A Little Life by Henny Yangahara. Uh, I spoke about this one in my review so I'm not going to talk too much about it now but I just think for me this one was about the characters rather than the writing and I just think it took took me somewhere different. It's certainly the book that I can think of that's affected me emotionally the most this year and the one that I would sort of find myself recommending to people most, uh, which is sort of a, a tough one for the, for the number one spot. It's absolutely stunning. It might be big, it might seem a bit scary, but do you know what, just read it. It's absolutely fabulous. Um, I do have a few problems with it, as I do with all the books I've read this year, but that's only natural. I think it's a absolutely wonderful piece of work um, and yeah I would just highly recommend this to anyone really. And then number one is a weird one, it's one I haven't spoken about all that much um, but it has really affected me this entire year and that's Special Topics and Calamity Physics by Marisha Pessel. It's not the book itself, so this is a weird one because this is my number one and I don't know that I enjoyed the book that much. It's a weird story, it doesn't connect all that well in certain places but there are some ideas in it that have just that, are, that have sort of come into my personality um, and that happens sometimes I'll read something and I decide I want a bit more of that and certain points in this book just were that for me. Uh, certain turns of phrases, certain ideas, things I've never come across before, ways of thinking about things uh, and it really did just, just parts of this book just blew me away. I think the other thing that really intrigued me and that um, sort of again push this number one was the the way that they play with with knowledge and with the idea of knowing something um, and sort of assuming you know something it happens to everyone all the time it was, well it happens to me a lot and I've, I've definitely seen other people have, have it happen but someone will mention something that seems so essential so like oh yeah of course that's true that you just accept it at face value and this book just mucks around with that so much so you have sort of quotations from people that, that did exist but that they'd never said or in a context that would never make sense when you actually think about it for a minute or two but it tricks you, it tricks you into that false sort of intellectualism almost I think it's done best um, when you sort of see there's a core curriculum in here, there's a reading list 
and the majority of the books are real, um, as it would be in life. The majority of the times people say something, it's going to be real. But dotted through it are these imagined texts, these imagined writings, these imagined places. And I think it's, it's a really eye-opening read in that, and I think it challenged me throughout the way I was reading it, and it challenged my acceptance of facts within books. Uh, really, really interesting. I, I love it when a book makes me think something slightly differently. So whilst the story wasn't my favourite story that I've read this year, certainly, and I, I did have some major problems with some of the characters, some elements of this book were so clever that it's just brought it completely to the top of my list. Um, if you like that sort of thing, if you liked things like A Little Life or A Secret History by Donna Tart, which also came quite close on my list, then I would say pick this one up and work your way through the characters, listen to what they're saying and find those little turns of phrases because I think it's so worth it. So those are my favourite books for 2015. That's insane. Um, I can't believe that it's sort of, it's it's done and I'm, I've read so many beautiful books this year, so many things I am so pleased to have got my hands on and experienced. I hope the year's been the same for you and please leave me recommendations down below. It's 2016 soon and a whole new new year of reading to, to get into new, new books and new authors. So I'd be really interested to know what your three favourite books of the year were and if there's anything in particular that you think changed the way you read this year. Thank you ever so much for watching and I will see you soon in my next video.